I'm going to teach you how to start a kettle corn business and make it extremely profitable for your family. Also going to share some recipes and flavors that will absolutely destroy your competition. No one's cooking these that I've ever seen over a decade of selling kettle corn and the cooking process that we use to sell the unique flavors that, that we create. I will share those with you later on in the video. This is Mike, the Caesar of concessions. This is going to be a deep dive into how to start a kettle corn business. We're going to talk about shelter first. We're not going to talk about trailers and brick and mortar. Steel tents or canopies, or whatever you want to call them. Okay. On the tent side, you got three choices. You have the cheap fifty to sixty-five dollar one. You have like an easy up you can get. You know, um, that'll pretty expensive depending upon what comes with it. But does it come with it? And then a top, top of the line. You know has canvas sides and the canvas roof and, and um, like big galvanized steel uh, poles for support. All three are, are fine options, right? If you're on a budget, you can start with a very cheap canopy. Just make sure that you secure it properly and don't be like me on my first couple events where I neglected to do that. And I come back uh, the next day and my tent is blown two blocks away and all my equipment is messed up and all my ingredients are all over the place. Learn from my mistakes. Secure your tent properly. And what I mean by that is maybe uh, five gallon buckets of concrete and a big spiral looping thing in there with a nice loop on it. Attach a rope to that to your tent. Lower the tent when you eat for the evening. Do not let it stay up full size and let the wind rip it apart. Okay, there's the tents. Next, we need to talk about the equipment. And so let's start off with a kettle corn cooker. Fortunately for us as vendors, not a lot of choices as to who to buy kettle corn equipment from. I personally, 11 years ago, bought my first kettle corn cooker from Greg Sweet's company. It's done great. Still have it. Still use it. 11 years later. You can start off with a small cooker at around a grand. Buy all the way up to a $10,000 kettle corn cooker with various sizes. That's up to you and your budget. Uh, if you're just starting out, I would recommend a smaller one, save money, build up to a, a, a bigger one, right? Um, you're going to need some way to sift your kettle corn when you're done cooking it. You've got to separate the unpopped kernels from, you know, the kernels that did pop. Here's what we did when we first started. We bought uh, some plastic totes from Walmart, you know, bends and bends, if you will, uh, drilled holes in them and put one underneath that uh, did not have holes. So we dumped the cooked kettle corn in that, lift up these bends and shake them. They weren't effective. Got super dirty. But we were on a budget and had to start out, and that's what we used. Eventually, I got a sifting table. Oh, yeah, baby. I thought I was big time. Um, sifting table is very important. I would recommend you go with first. I had a buddy uh, make one for me. Um, he was a welder, you know, and that saved me a lot of money versus buying a sifting table from a, a manufacturer. Let's talk about the rest of the equipment we're going to need. So we have the cooking. We have the sifting table, which those are very important. What you're going to need? Going to need scoops to sift the popcorn around. Serve. You're going to need 
bags to put the kettle corn in. How do you seal the bags of kettle corn? Well, I use twist ties, but you also have a lot of variety of sealing options. Back to the bags. I forgot to mention this. There are so many different sizes of bags and different thicknesses that you can use. So that's that's a personal choice. Something I can't tell you. I, I use 1.5 mil is what I use on the thickness side. For my bags in a five by eight, um, that's what I sell mine at. It's up to you and how you want to do that. Okay, so you're gonna need scoops, you're gonna need bags, you need some way to seal the bag, like I said, twist ties or some kind of seal attic type of deal. Whatever, it, it's it's up, up to you. You're gonna need a salt shaker. You gotta put salt on that kettle. And I would recommend, a, you know, a big industrial type with big holes in it. So you can really get that salt all over it. Okay. Ingredients. Gotta have ingredients. Kettle corn. Popping corn. Okay. You're going to need either vegetable oil or corn oil. You run to a hundred different vendors, you're going to tell you a hundred different types or they're going to be split 50-50 on vegetable oil or corn oil. I think corn oil is the better product. I, I do think so. But it costs me. It's up to you uh, to choose. You're going to need salt. And you're going to need sugar. As your basic starting kit for selling. Make traditional kettle corn. Okay? So... Let's talk about the two different types of corn that you're going to need to buy the pot. There is butterfly style corn and magic mushroom. Again, vendors are split down the middle on this one. Um, there's positives and negatives of both styles. I prefer the butterfly. And why I prefer the butterfly is you get a much bigger yield. And that's what we're trying to do. Right? We want a bigger yield. So per batch that we've made, we get more bags out of it to sell. Now, magic mushroom looks better, I think, in a bag. And you do get less bags because it's a bigger corn and fills up. It's kind of up to you how you want to run your company. Um, also, I think butterfly, the flavors that I use, coat the butterfly much better than a magic mushroom. Just been my experience with this. Okay. Events. Like, what kind of events do I even do if I get into this business? Oh, you got so many to choose from. I personally specialize in youth sporting events and the reason that is is because I'm the only kettle corn vendor there and that is so important in this business because there is so much competition out there and if you can be exclusive you're going to do much better even smaller type community events let's say a concert in a park or something that would also be a good one. And of course, festivals and fairs. Now, there's lots of ways to get into those. Huh? I mean, you, usually you have to sign up online uh, six months, three months in advance and get your name in there, pay the vendor fee, and get into those events. Um, and they range in size from 1,000 people going to 50, 100,000 people going. It is up to you to what what your company goals are, what your staffing looks like. I met your competition. And if you're going to be on a row doing different events, you're going to have a lot of competition. And I want to help you destroy that competition. So let's first talk about signage and banners. Okay. You can get really expensive banners to wrap around your tent. And that is really the way to go if 
you have the budget for it. You're going to look professional. Uh, you're going to look amazing. And people are going to know exactly what you're selling from, you know, 50 yards away. A flag but would also be great, you know, a big wind-whipping flag saying kettle corn. You know, that people can see from the other end of the event. That's another great way to get people to come to your tent. Now, what if you don't have that kind of budget, you know, to, to buy these wraparound banners? Um, well, you could use an A-frame and, and put your menu out on that. Um, that's definitely feasible. Um, not as dynamic looking as the banners, but you know, they'll work in a pinch and then have some poster board signage up around it. Make it look great. You know, if you have horrible handwriting like I do, have someone else write it, please. You don't want to look like a serial killer They're selling them kettle corn. They're not going to want to buy them. Horrible handwriting up there. I've learned a hard way. I have horrible handwriting. I, yeah, don't, don't, do, don't be me. Learn from my decades worth of mistakes so you don't make them. You're also going to need tables, and I forgot to mention that. You're going to need tables, two six-foot folding tables inside of your tent uh, should suffice. How are you going to beat your competition besides banners? This is where the rubber meets the road, baby. The kind of product you sell. Okay. Everyone's going to sell traditional kettle. Most will also sell a caramel or um, like a red cinnamon type of, you've probably had that, or, or a cheese type kettle. I don't do, well, I do all of those, but I don't specialize in those. I specialize in stuff that no one else makes. Roasted vanilla bean kettle corn. I gave it that name. And it's important that the name pops on the menu. That people see roasted vanilla bean kettle corn. Well, they, they got to have it. Snickerdoodle kettle corn. Because I live in the Midwest, everyone loves snickerdoodle cookies. It's a big thing. Um, Snickerdoodle kettle corn. That's another one. Another one we have is cinnamon roll kettle corn. <clears throat> Let me tell you how I make this. The roasted vanilla bean. It smells amazing. It smells better than any other kettle corn product I think that you could cook. Heat up your vegetable. Okay. Then put your corn in. Once you start getting the first initial pops, you're going to put Tarani's. You know, it's a coffee uh, flavoring. You see at gas stations everywhere. Okay, it's a syrup. Uh, you're going to pour some of that into your kettle corn as it starts to pop. Now, that will bring the temperature back down. That's okay. Actually, you want to turn your temperature down just a little bit. And add, you want the corn to pop slow, so this flavoring starts coating all of that. Then after you start getting some pops, turn the heat up, because we don't want it to burn. So then we'll turn the heat up and really get a pop. In. Gotta stir a lot, okay, because we do not want it to burn. Of course, you put sugar in with it as well as uh, this syrup flavor. Then we dump it out, uh, you pour your salt on Now, I will warn you, this kettle corn, when it hits you, it hurts way, way worse than any other. I got burns on me still to this day from years ago where it is stuck on my neck because what happens is when it gets coated with that syrup, it gets sticky and it pops to you and starts sizzling upon your body parts. It hurts, and it feels horrible. But when you're a kettle corn soldier, you keep popping as this thing is sizzling on your neck. That's crazy. But those kettle corn people are kind of crazy. Okay. 
snickerdoodle cake. Cook it the same way, but without the syrup. What we're going to add on this is ground cinnamon. You're going to put that in as your kettle corn starts to cook with the sugar. Dump it on your table. Put the salt on it. Snickerdoodle kettle corn. Cinnamon roll kettle corn. Oh my God. It, it absolutely smells amazing as well. Again, we're going to use the flavoring syrup. Flavoring cinnamon flavoring for coffee. It's a syrup. I need a drink. We are going to put that in its same process as the roasted vanilla bean kettle corn. Okay. Those three alone will destroy your competition, I'm telling you. No one's making roasted vanilla bean kettle corn. <coughs> well, hopefully, you now are going to make roasted vanilla bean kettle corn. When do I even sell this? Well, spring, early summer. You can sell it during the summer, and, and you should. But you have to understand that's not your busiest season, or hasn't been for me in my decades. So, the Sunday kettle corn, and then the fall and winter. The fall is absolutely amazing. You can do pumpkin spice kettle corn. Uh, I'm going to actually share that recipe in another video and show you exactly how I make a pumpkin spice kettle corn. That is amazing, and people love it with the nutmeg, the cinnamon, and pumpkin flavoring. Forget about it. During the fall, it is gone. No one makes it that I've seen out there. Okay. Um, so those are your best seeds. Like I said, you, if you're only going to be a kettle corn vendor, you got to sell it during the summer so you can make money, but just understand that your best seasons are spring, early summer, very late summer, fall, winter. I have covered a ton of a ton of information in this video, and I bet I've left some things out um, that I'll think of later. So please comment on the video. Let me know what you think about it. I would appreciate a like and a sub. This is Mike to Caesar of concessions out.